This um, lecture is a little bit different in that we'll be doing mostly interactive fun stuff, um, but I just have a few slides we can look at first. Okay, so we're gonna use this package for data visualization called Esquiz. Um, I am not a French speaker, but I believe it's French for sketch, um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, it's an interactive tool for you to, um, to make plots. So we'll have to do, um, if you have not used it before, which probably you have not, um, you'll need to install this package. Um, and for me, I will, load it in the library or load the library into uh, my workspace um, and you'll need to do the same. So if I go over to R, um, shouldn't hurt me to install it again. I'm just gonna install it and it may ask you to restart, that's totally fine. So it's been installed. Good stuff. And then hopefully everyone can see this. Okay. Um, and then I'll want to load the library. Okay. And you shouldn't get any output there. So that's, that's good. Okay. So we've installed it. We load it now. Now what? <laughs> Okay, so the Esquiz package is really helpful for creating plots. It's interactive. It's not actually um, a lot of code or really any code, um, but it helps us get to that code point, which I think is why it's so useful. Because sometimes it's, you know, I, I know I run into this, and and perhaps you all have too in your in your time here that you can't quite remember what the function was to do something, um, and you just need a little reminder. So Esquiz is really great for that. Um, and for generating that code that you might need to make a visualization. Okay, so let's at this point jump to, uh, just jump to R and we're gonna do things pretty interactively from here. Okay, so using the function in the Esquiz package, Esquiz R, I can create, like start creating a plot basically uh, for a data set that I specify, okay? So I can run this, but then it's gonna ask me, it's like, okay, well, what data do you wanna work on? But in this case, let's say I wanna work on the cars data set. This is the one that comes kind of by default with R. Um, so I'll just tell it MT cars. Okay. And so you should see uh, a nice pop up here that is showing um, basically all the different columns of the data. Um, not a whole lot going on yet because I actually need to start doing some stuff. So what happens when uh, you know, I've got these boxes here, so variables up top, and then these boxes for might be my x-axis, y-axis, fill, color, size. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but um, I'm just going to drag mpg to x. So it automatically detects, oh, you know, maybe you want to do a histogram. And I can kind of scroll down a little. It's a little maybe not quite fitting. Um, uh, in the view, but I can kind of see that there's a histogram here. Um, and, you know, maybe I want to do um, an additional variable, you know, I could take this down maybe to the y axis. And if I have two continuous things, Eskies says, okay, well, I think you want to do a scatter plot. And so it's kind of changed how it looks. Okay, um, so one thing I think is super useful is this box here at the bottom, this code box. 
And so this is actually code uh, that is uh, going to make a plot for me using the ggplot2 package, which is super powerful in R for making really beautiful visualizations. And I can just, you know, so, hey, I like did a little work up here. And I want to insert that into my code. I can do that like so. And so now it's kind of put that into uh, the console for me. You could copy it, you could put it in a script. Um, so you can copy to clipboard. Um, so yeah, it's really nice. Uh, as like I was saying, it jogs your memory as to what those um, functions are. And again, like we haven't seen a lot of this stuff before, but we will talk in a lot of detail about it tomorrow. I can download it, lots of cool stuff. Okay, um, so as you saw, the plot type changed when I added cylinders to the Y bucket here, but let's say I wanna do you know a different type of plot. I can uh, see kind of what the, um, options are here. I could do a jitter plot, which is just adding a little scatter to the data, um, or a line plot. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, but yeah, you can change it. It does a pretty good job of guessing what you want to do based on you know is this a factor, is this a uh, continuous variable, etc. Okay, um, so. Over here, you'll see this um, facet button. Um, and so maybe I want to see what that kind of looks like. So I'm gonna drag the cylinder over here. And so now what I've got is a couple different, basically like a facet or my plot is broken down by cylinder, the CYL um, variable. So now I have a histogram of all the MPG, but broken down by four, six, or eight um, cylinders. And so if I want to, you know, maybe make a different plot, you know, I want to add, um, basically make it a scatter plot for each of these facets, I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, facets allow you to kind of break up the data um, much like you would maybe do a group by with your um, with your summarize function. Okay, um, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with size and color. So you know, let's say we've got our facets here, but we want weight to be um, the size of the dot, we can do that. Um, there's not too much variation, but we see there's um, some four cylinder cars that are pretty light. Um, so that's a small dot there. We could also do color is, um, or weight is color. Um, and so the heavier cars are kind of this lighter blue. Um, and we can also do a lot down here with uh, the appearance. Um, but let's say we want to change the size of um, the or the shape or the size of the specific uh, points that I'm using. You know, let's say I want to do square points or cross. that I can do that. And so those kind of look a little bit different. Triangle, those look a little bit different. Um, and maybe I want to change the colors of the high and low value. I can do that. I want that to be pink. And this to be purple. And great, I can go back to that and kind of see how that's changed uh, the appearance of my plot. 
Okay, and so maybe I don't want a point plot anymore. I want, or sorry, I want to um, add basically like a trend line to my data. I might be able to do that as well. Okay, and so that you could do with this smooth line plot option. Okay, doesn't look super great, um, but it is trying to do basically like a uh, fit line for the data. Um, so that might be useful if you're trying to just get a preliminary look at trends, uh, you know, what's going on in the data. Um, and you can also play around with the size, make those points a little bit bigger, easier to see. Yeah, so lots of options there. And we got um, some good questions about, as we were just doing some of that preliminary plot exploration, about changing uh, the labels and the title of your figure um, so that you can do with this uh, label and title. Um, uh, basically menu here. So let's say I want, oops, not that, <laughs> um, that I want to change uh, the title um, to something. I can add that. Um, and I want the Y label to be, um, what was it here? It was disp. Um, maybe I want it to be something uh, a little bit different, or I want it in capital. Uh, want it capitalized? I can do that. And you know, I want it in bold, or I want it in italic. I can do that too. Okay. So there's, uh, you can see the change right there. It's a little hard to see, but, um, and then you have a title, nice title for your plot. Um, and the cool thing is you can download this. Um, let's say I wanna download it as a, a PNG or PDF, I can do that. Okay. And if I go and open that, it's going to have a transparent background by default, but um, if you were to open this up in kind of like a white background, you'd see um, basically the same thing you see here. Okay, um, so that is um, Eskies in, uh, in general. Um, of course, there's tons of stuff to play with here. Um, you know, what makes sense for your data will vary. I mean, this particular data set that we're playing with here is a lot of continuous variables. Um, but if you have uh, factors or something um, that is a character type, uh, going in here and doing something like a box plot might be really nice. Um, but yeah, so that is it in a nutshell. And I think uh, the best way to get kind of familiar with this and play with this is to try it on your own. And so we'll actually break out uh, into labs to get a little time to play around with this.